Okay, guys. Oh, come on, listen up, all right? We got a show to do tonight. Limousines are ready downstairs. Let's load up. You need an invitation again? Come on, let's move it. Let's move it. Do come in, Mr. Bergman. My room is your room. You'd better change, Susan. I got everything going okay over the auditorium. You feel okay, Eli? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, look, why don't you take a little rest? We've still got a little time yet, okay? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, for you that are going to the upper left, read your ticket, please. Susan. How many times do we have to go through this, Susan? As many times as it takes to get the point across. So run along. You have thousands of people waiting for you. I don't play to thousands. I can't relate to thousands. I play to one person, you. You relate to every moon-eyed female that gets in your way. Don't start that again. Now, come on, Eli. We're running on a pretty tight schedule. You'd be there tonight.
Ladies and gentlemen, Eli has left the auditorium. Uh, Dean Bergman, let me have the manager, please. Yeah, what's the situation there? Is it clear? The police are holding the crowds back at street level. But you must understand, Mr. Bergman, should there be any damages at all, we must hold Mr. Eli Canfield accountable. Mr. Canfield is responsible for the top floor and the top floor only. Now, the rest of it's your problem. They ain't having to bring some food up the room. Right. Sorry. Uh, we'd like some food in the room by the time we get there, too. Yeah, about five minutes. How you feeling, Eli? Oh, okay. Good show tonight. Service company, get the food up here, Dean. Check. Eli, we have to talk. Talk, I can hear you. Out here, damn it. All right, I'm out here. Food's ready, Eli. Good, I'm starved. Look, I was wondering if you wanted to send some photos down to the people in the lobby. Yeah, send the new ones down. Okay, no, color shots hadn't been autographed yet. Well, send the black and white. Dean! Huh? I'd like to have a few minutes alone with my husband, please. Yeah, sure. I'll send down the uh, autographed black and white glossies, okay? Good. Eli, we have got... Hey, Eli. You sent for a bellhop? I did! Ask him to wait, please, and close the door, Chad. Yes, ma'am. Not all of Eli Canfield's fans could get in the concert tonight. Some of those people are here at the hotel. Do you really think he's going to put in an appearance here? I really hope so. I've been waiting a long time to see him. You might have to wait a long time yet. I don't care. I wait all night if I have to. I'm not walking out on you, Eli. I'm running out. I can't take it anymore. I know these concert tours are hard on you, Susan, but damn it, they are me too. You have people waiting on you hand and foot. They bend over backwards to please you. I'm treated like another piece of baggage, but no more. Oh, he's kind, thoughtful. He's a perfect gentleman. And they're nothing but pimps. They supply you with women everywhere. Just how in the hell do you think I met you? You son of a... Susan, people don't run out on me. I get rid of them, but they don't run out on me. You're crazy. You know that, Eli. You're crazy. Well, I think, I think he's real cool, because, you know, he's got it all together. I could almost feel sorry for you, Eli. <laughs> Goodbye, Eli. See you on the 10th. Oh, it's Houston, some kind of mix-up with the uh, hotel reservations. Oh, take care of that before you go to bed tonight, okay? Working on it now. Uh, Susan's gone. You want to run that by me again? Susan's gone. Eli had a hot and heavy fight earlier and she walked out. I mean, Eli hadn't left the room all night. Son, don't you ever let anybody tell you miracles don't still happen. Here's how we're going to handle this thing. You are? You awake, son? 
Yeah, come in. Well, boy, turn them away again tonight. Yeah, they were lucky. I was lousy. Oh, now don't say that. You know you're your own worst critic. Listen, uh, we got a bunch of people out here. Uh, Susan left me. Yeah, uh, Dean told me about that. Listen, I take no pleasure in saying that I told you so, son, but I have been saying all along that Susan's just in this thing for what she could get for Susan. We gotta remember that this kind of life's not for everybody. It's hard on a person, especially if they're not part of the show like Susan. Wears on a body, makes them mean. And the next thing you know, they're, they're trying to tear you down. You see, people like Susan are fragile things. They're not tough like we are. Should have taken better care of her. <laughs> no, listen, no woman ever had it better than Susan. You gotta remember, she walked out on you. You didn't leave her stranded. Now I want you to get up from there and fight this thing. You gotta start remembering who you are. Now listen, get up from there. Come on, I want to take a look at you. All right, now who are you? You're Eli Kenfield, and don't the whole damn world know it.
I'll keep you coming. That's real nice, sweetheart. You got a nice voice, but I prefer you do your material on your own time, okay? Eli, son, you ready? Okay, let's cut a record.
my son, that was fantastic. That was good for a first cut, really. Yeah. Dean Bergman. Yeah, Dean. Okay, uh, just uh, make them comfortable and I'll uh, be right in, okay? Mr. Burke, up. Mr. West. No, no, That's keep your seats, boys. Keep your seats. Good, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Mr. Cannon. Well, now, boys, shall we get started? I don't know which was better that time, your singing or my piano. Uh, neither was John's guitar. <laughs> oh, that's low. Who's the girl? Her? Well, that's Jeannie Loring. Nice, huh? Better than that. You know her very well? Not as well as I'd like to. She says she'd rather be friends. Can you believe that? Oh. <laughs> oh, I invited her to stick around for the party. Is that all right with you? Any friend of yours. Have mercy on me, will you? Suppose we just lay it all right out on the table. This is what a Susan want out of this divorce action. Two million. Two million? Thought you boys were on our side. We're talking about a flat settlement, Mr. Cannon, with, with all parties in full agreement before we go to court. Well, considering the original demands that Mrs. Canfield's attorneys made, I, I think Mr. Burke and I have worked out a very compatible arrangement. And I'm in complete agreement with my partner. Well, now, it just uh, purely is a comfort to me to know you boys are so damn pleased with yourselves. Dear lady, you were right when you said Susan would break Eli's heart. She'd also added that she'd try to rob him blind. Every time I think about how that gracious lady's heart bled because of the way that little because of the way Susan treated Eli. Well, it's just, that's too much. That girl's a schemer, boys. Now, she walked out on Eli a year ago down in Miami. A poor boy. Never had nothing, just like his folks before him. Simple, clean living, honest people. Now she wants to rob him of all the money he's worked his whole life for. P perhaps we could go back to Mrs. Canfield's attorneys. What do you think, Mr. Burke? I think you and I have just witnessed one of the greatest performances in Gentleman Jim Cannon's career. Now, suppose we get Eli in here. You'll deal with me. You mean you handle his personal life as well as his career? They're one and the same, Mr. Burke, one and the same. Exhausted and Kearney broke his G-string. <laughs> Would you like for me to show you around this palace? Oh, no, thanks, Teddy. Why don't you get us a drink? Well, I guess it's a start. Hey, Gordy. How you doing? Oh, just fine, just fine. What do you have? It's for somebody special. Man of the last kitchen contest. Hi. Hi. I hope you don't mind my taking the grand tour. Not at all. Is the party getting dull? It's been dull all night. You weren't there. She must have been very special. She was. Do you like the house, Miss Laura? You know my name? Teddy told me. Well, then, he must have told you he invited me.
Yeah, but you're not the type of girl Teddy usually winds up with. Who said he's wound up with me? Teddy's one of my best friends. I hardly know him. Mr. Canfield, you're having the same mistake at this time. Any statement at all. Have you got any? They're coming out. Mr. Canfield, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Please. Now, now we're going to cooperate. We're going to cooperate, but we'd just like to have these questions one at a time. Please now, okay? What was the judge's decision? Well, the judge granted Miss Canfield a decree of divorce. What and that? Now, wait a minute, sweetheart. Wait just a minute. Let me finish now. Furthermore, I was going to say that all parties involved are just uh, totally in agreement about this thing, and I don't want you folks to go printing there was a bloody fight in there now. Well, what were the grounds? Metal cruelty or infidelity? I don't believe I know your name, sweetheart. What Darley was Darley Fry. Darley Fry. Well, listen, sweetheart. You and I both know that those are just technical terms and don't mean a thing now. Well, how about if Eli answers one? Sure. We got word the night your wife walked out that you jumped into bed with... Hey! hey. Don't! Please, 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 now! Take it easy now! Calm down! Come on, come on! All right, please, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, calm down now. Calm down. Everything's fine. Eli, please, will you, will you just calm down? Now, come on, folks, let's just give us a break here, will you? This whole thing has been real hard on Eli. I mean, Eli's just been heart broke. Now, just, just be fair with us, will you? That, that, haven't we always been fair with you now, really? singers, the mysterious rhinestone cowboy, David Allen Coe, ladies and gentlemen. Come on over here, David Allen. All I got to say is that was really tremendous. Well, thank Great. you. How are you doing? Fine. Oh, it's been a long time since I've been here. Isn't that the song from your latest movie? Yes, that's from Buckstone County Prison. Your career really seems to be zooming now. How about telling us about it? Well, I've got a new book out about my life called Just for the Record that I wrote. And I'm working on a new album now. So I would say things are looking up pretty well for us. Mm. I, I thank you for the applause. But you know, there's someone else that I feel deserves the applause a lot more than I do. And there's something I have to say here tonight, and I hope that I don't offend anybody or make anybody mad. Did I miss something, David? No, as a matter of fact, with your permission, you're not gonna miss anything. Uh, okay, David, you've got my attention, but take it away. You know, I've been really upset lately about some things I've been reading in the papers about a friend of mine. Uh, I really don't think that he deserves the kind of publicity that he's been getting. And I know most people know that I was in prison. But what they don't know is that there was a man involved helping me get out of prison, and that man was Eli Canfield. I don't blame you folks. I, I probably wouldn't believe it either if I had read all the junk that I've been reading about Eli in the papers lately. And it's, it just doesn't make any sense to me because I know Eli Camfield and I know he's a good man. And I'm really proud to say that he's my friend. If I know the egomaniac that runs this show, this whole thing will be on the wires by morning. Listen to What's that? 
You are now. Yeah, I reckon so. That girl just trying to put the make on the recording studio. Jenny Lauren? Yeah. Oh, she's something, ain't she? Know where she lives? Yeah. Run over and pick her up. I think I'm gonna take her to a movie. Hmm, yeah, sure. And uh, tell Dust to bring that guy in. Okay. Okay, Dusty, bring him on in. Certainly, it's a pleasure to be invited here, Mr. Canfield. Pleasure's mine. I appreciate you coming out this late. I think you like this selection, Mr. Canfield. Well, these are nice, uh, all How top quality. How much? Uh, well, for that one, uh, are we talking cash or charge? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just not really used to dealing that way. Uh, How much for all of them? Uh, for all of these? You did bring bullets, didn't you? Yes, sir. They're, they're right here in the case. Say when. One hundred. Two hundred. Three hundred. Four hundred. Five hundred. Six hundred. Seven hundred. Eight hundred. Nine hundred. When? Uh, uh, I mean, that's going to cover everything. Uh, well, Mr. Canfield, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoy all of these, and uh, you can keep the case. It's been a real pleasure, Mr. Canfield. Thank you. Hey, good night. Yeah. Mm. Well, then why do you bother coming out to see films? Well, I can't always get first-run movies. You're lucky, Gene. We usually have to watch his old movies. <laughs> oh, well, I've seen them, and I thought they were pretty good. Oh, hey. another unsolicited <laughs> testimonial. I like this girl. I really like this girl. I think I'll keep her around. Hey, Chad, see if you can hear that every time you hit the highway. I got it if it don't jump. Oh, hell! Hey, what you doing? Who do you think you hollering at anyway? You falling out of your mouth? You guys leave them alone! Chad, they're right. What? You wrecked your car. Man, that damn thing was a wreck before it ever got here. Wait on me in the car. <clears throat> You'll have to pardon him, Scott. I can't take him anywhere anymore. Well, what are we gonna do about the car? Oh, well, that's all right, Eli. Uh, it was wrecked ever before I saw it. Give me the keys.
What if you and I trade cars? You kidding? Even swap. Are you crazy? Take, Take it, it, man. Yeah. You'll have an original Eli Canfield car. Yeah. And I would have settled for your autograph. You can have that, too, on the car title. Let's take these girls on, huh? I'm a little late for them to be out, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, this is great. You guys don't mind walking on do you? Gotta be kids. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyone ever tell you you had cold hands? Yeah. And uh, anybody besides me ever tell you to watch your weight and take it easy on the pills? Really fall apart, huh? I mean it, Eli. You've got to stop pushing yourself so hard. You're not 20 anymore. You still having trouble getting to sleep? Yeah, when I'm working, I'm all right. When I'm not, I just can't get it all together. Still taking those pills you send over, though. I want you to try getting to sleep without the pills. You through playing doctor? Bye-bye, now. Well, we got it all nailed down, son. Sir Lou's got the concert halls all ready to go. And the tour starts in London. What do you think of that? Impressive. I want you to get the plane ready for a flight out of here, say, a week before the London concert. Let's make it on the 15th. Uh, we have a charity concert on the 15th. All right, then we'll do it on the 16th. Just take care of it. All right. Oh, uh, Dr. Bradley's waiting to see you in the study. You been waiting long, Doc? Yeah, sit down, take a load off your feet. We'll get you a drink. No, thanks. My boy Eli's all right, ain't he? Your boy, as you call him, is 42, going on 60. He's wound up tighter in a cheap watch, Jim. All right, then you give him something to unwind him. Just like you've done since he was 22, going on 60.
not a new one, it's an old one. Did you like it? Yeah. It's yours. have you been standing there? Long enough to be certain sure of what I've heard. And am I supposed to know what that means? You know what it means, all right. You just had to move in with Eli, didn't you? Did I need to ask your permission? No. Well, then, that makes me feel much better. I guess I was wrong about you. I wanted to believe you was a real lady. But watching you just now, I see how moonstruck you are by all this. Look, if I wanted lectures, I could visit my big brother. I thought we were friends, Teddy. A friend would be happy for me. I don't want to see you go down the tubes like Susan did. I'm not Susan. I've been on my own for a long time. I can handle it. Tut, bring me that M16. <laughs> hey. Load it up again. Hey, Jenny, come here. Man. Don't try that. No thanks. Okay. All right, Tut. Hey, Donna, come here. I knew you'd want to try it. You try anything, it moves, won't you? Okay. Let's go. Here's two. Handle that real well. Keep that up, not to make you one of the bodyguards. Hey, can I see your gun? Sure. You never can tell when a crazy will grab you. You've got to learn how to protect yourself. Come on, Norm, let's show them how to protect yourself. Come on, Norm. Now, there's a lot of little things you can do in case someone grabs you. Oh. <coughs> Come on, Norm, let's show them a few more moves. You guys like Don Rickles? Oh, he's okay. Yeah, he's great, Doc. He's fantastic. I don't like him with a damn. Are you still handling it?
see you later. Who was that? Dean Bergman sent her over. She's just another sacrifice to the living legend. Don't worry about her. Sang in 20 years. 20 years. The lyrics. I can't remember the lyrics. I look for them. I try. I just can't concentrate. I'll concentrate. I'll get them. Eli, why don't you try to get some sleep? Atlanta's sold out. That's tonight. It's hot in here. Remember that desert movie we did in 55? 
How can she sleep when it's so damn hot? Jim and Jim wants me to do a Christmas album. Ho, ho, ho. Eli, you ought to try to get some sleep. You need some sleep, you know. Hymns? i never done a hymn in a movie. That's a good idea. I'll do a hymn. Eli, it's just a few hours to the concert. Why don't you get some rest? Try I want... I wonder if it's changed. I wonder if Hollywood's still the same. After the tour, it's back to Hollywood. We'll hire the best writers. The best director. Man, I could predict. Eli! Eli! What's the matter? Get Dean in here! But what's the matter? Damn it, get Dean! Killed over. We're at the hospital now. Yeah. What? Well, I'm trying to tell you. I, uh, the doctor said it was a uh, some kind of seizure. Was it a heart attack? No, no, I, I don't think so. A, a seizure. Well, how the hell should I know? I'm not a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Exhaustion. Uh, too little sleep. Too damn many pills. Listen, you get hold of whoever's in charge of that hospital and you tell them I want to move Eli to Nashville just as soon as it's possible. All right, I, I'll, I'll call Doc Bradley in the hospital on this end and take care of that. Now, you listen to me, Dean, and you listen good. You nail this thing down tight on your end, you hear me? Nothing, I mean nothing, is going to upset this overseas tour. You understand that? Gentleman Jim Cannon, the personal manager of Eli Canfield, said today that rumors that the entertainer was hospitalized due to a serious illness are just that, rumors. We have a report now from Al Ramey. Eli wants to be in tip-top condition when he makes that overseas tour. Now, we wouldn't lie to Eli's fans, would we? No, sir, Eli is just fine. He's just fine. So a reassuring report tonight for the fans of Eli Canfield. Scott? John, elsewhere in Nashville today, we have these stories. I'm not walking out on you, Eli. I'm running out. I can't take it anymore. I mean it, Eli. You've got to stop pushing yourself so hard. You're not 20 anymore. You know, we got a career here to worry about, son, and that's all that's important. time you got your butt up here. I've been here every day. 
She wouldn't let me in. Said you needed to rest. That's what to tell me. Yeah, the right to, you know. Is that for me? What the hell, yeah. It's, uh, I thought I'd lost you, man. It's, I've seen dead men look better than you when they wheeled you in here. And you thought your paycheck was gonna stop, huh? What the hell kind of thing is that to say? I've been with you from the start. I'm Teddy Coburn. I was there when they wouldn't even throw a dime in your cup. That's the first time I've seen that old boy with slick back hair in a long time. His cock of the walk, strutting around the stage, strumming on a twenty-dollar guitar. <laughs> you remember him? Vaguely. I wonder what ever happened to him. <laughs> Man, him flat his ass in the hospital bed. You know, Eli. I think when you get out of here, we ought to go looking for that boy. I guess I better sneak on out of here before the sentries start patrolling again. Take care of yourself now, you hear? I mean, if uh, you check out, who's going to take custody of me? Teddy, you're a real good friend. Probably the only damn one I ever had. Looking great, son. Looking great. You know, I believe this 10 days of rest just about all you needed. Listen, I got some good news for you. I'm going to check you out of this hotel. Hmm? How about that? Ain't nothing but sick people around here anyway. Get you back home where you belong. What you reading there? Listen, don't, don't worry about a thing, son. I've been talking to the booking agents on the phone, and, and we're going to be able to reschedule that Atlanta thing. You ain't going to miss a thing. Of course, you're going to have to do it after we get back on the overseas tour, but... Well, you know, like I said, don't worry about a thing. Everything's gonna be all right. It's gonna be fine. Listen, son, I'm gonna have to go. I've got a million things to do, but I tell you what, you're looking good. I'll see you back at the house now, okay? Okay. Looking good, son. Looking mighty good. Is Eli ready? Ready to go? Okay, good. Look, um, go bring the car around to the front and wait there, all right? Gentleman Jim wants the press and TV boys to catch Eli leaving the hospital. Got you covered. Okay, good. Norm's getting the car. Eli, you look great. You about ready to say goodbye to this place? Yeah, out of here and right back on the tour, right? Right. You think I'm ready? You really look better. Yes, sir. On top of the world, boss. Just what I thought. Smiling and looking well, Eli Canfield left the hospital today. We talked with his road manager, Dean Bergman. Bergman told us that Canfield, for the last two days, has been working on his European tour. Reporting from Memorial Hospital, this is Russ Dubuque. Uh, Dusty, find Dean, tell him to get into the office right now. Eli, you've hardly said two words since we left the hospital. You're all right, Eli. You're back home, and I'll look after you. I'll be here to look after you from now on. to see me? Close the door. Is something wrong? No, you're a bright young man. You tell me. Uh, I don't quite understand what you're getting at. All right, suppose I spell it out for you. 
Just how in the hell did this Jeannie Loring get to be such a permanent fixture around here? Oh, it's Eli. You know how Eli likes to have... I know what Eli likes. Eli likes variety. That's what Eli likes. That's what he needs. Now, how many times do I have to tell you that? Well, I tried. I brought in a couple of girls, but he still... Can I trust anybody in this organization? The next thing you know, they're moving in. No. Don't tell me. What was I supposed to do? I mean, Eli told us to bring her clothes in. Now, I can't tell him she's not welcome here. Son of a bitch! I can't believe what I'm hearing. All right, who brought her into the house in the first place? Teddy. Oh, I should have known that. All right, I just got to run a loyalty check around here. All right, you get Chad, and you tell him to get Teddy in here right now. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about when I speak about loyalty in this organization. Now, you get out of here. you? Hey, what you doing, man? I'm just leaving, Teddy. Come on, man. Let me in the car here. Get your hand off there, you turkey. I'm coming in. Found it. I found it. What'd you find, Teddy? Your hands off that. It's a surprise. Come on, man. Let's cruise down the street so we can't find us another bar. Find some leg, huh? Teddy, my God, you... That's right. Me, Teddy. You, Chad. Come on, feed the horses. Let's go. Well, might as well. It's going to happen sooner or later anyway. You hear me, don't you, boy? <laughs> like sire notes on a bugle. Wait outside. I'll call you if I need you. Just a real big disappointment to me. Does that mean I don't get the car Saturday night? You brought that Lauren girl into the house, and you're gonna have to take her out. Got to do it for Eli's career. See, that's all that matters here. Take her out, son. Or I'll have to take you both out. Teddy? All right, it's plain to me if you thought where's about Where's he that... at? What are you talking about? Teddy, where's he at? He's in the study. Come on, Dusty. All right. Eli, you seen Teddy? No, what's wrong? Oh, he's flying high again. I can't find him. That's a big house. He's around here somewhere. We'll find him. You and Dusty check the house. Jay and I look outside. He's probably roosting in a tree somewhere.
Anything? Nothing. Like the one you started out with. <laughs> Teddy, come out, come out wherever you are. Isn't he a little too old to be playing this? Yeah, I think he is, but you know how Teddy is. He's at the pool. Hey, Teddy. Hey, yourself. Look what I found. I found it, man. Found it. He's gonna hurt himself, Eli. Come on, Teddy. Get down before you fall. Well, don't you see? It's the guitar. Now we can go find that skinny kid. I see it, Teddy, but get down before you get hurt. Come on, Teddy, don't fool around. That thing's plugged in. Oh, it won't work. We'll never find you again. I'm sorry. I tried to find you. I tried. Get an ambulance. We gotta get Teddy to the hospital. It's no use. Get him to the hospital, it'd be all right. Eli, it's no use. What did you do to him? Well, what the heck did you do to him? You're talking out of your head, son. Now just shut your mouth a minute and take it easy. I mean, my God, we got a dead man here. Let's have some respect. All right, Chad, I understand how you feel. You feel responsible for him because you brought him here. But nobody blames you for it, son. I mean, it was just an accident. You saw it, everybody saw it. It was just an accident. Nobody's responsible. Yeah, it was an accident. Eli, son, son, listen, listen to me. Now, I know Teddy was with us for a long time, but we just, we just can't let this thing get us down now, okay? Now, listen, I want to get you upstairs. Come on. I'll see to it that he gets some rest. No, no, uh, I'd like, like for you to wait here. We'll talk. Come on, son. Hello, honey, this is Jim Cannon. Right, listen, have Doc Bradley stop out by the house, will you? Right. Uh, okay, thank you now. Well, now, Miss Loring, we can have our little chat. Would you like to sit down? I tell you, I'm just afraid Eli's taking this thing real hard. Him just being out of the hospital and all. 
Uh, we just may have to cancel some of our commitments. Well, why don't you stop the phony tears and get to the point? Well, Miss Loring, I was just trying to be gentle with you, but uh, you're a strong young lady, so I'll just lay it out for you. Eli asked me to express his gratitude for all the things you've done for him and to let you know that... Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't! Eli, Eli, please unlock the door. Eli, Eli, please. Eli. That's the way it is, sweetheart. Be sure to let me know where you're going to be now, and I'll send you things along. I'm sorry, Mr. Perkins. I've, my order's that you've been fired, and I can't let you inside. No, no, listen. All right, the album is not done. But listen, I... Right. All right, I understand your point of view, son, but listen, you're not trying very hard to understand mine. All right, we do the benefit tonight, and then tomorrow we start on the greatest overseas tour of our career. Right. All right, uh, right, listen to me now. Here's something else I want you to think about while we're gone. When we get back, we've got to talk some new percentages, okay? Right. Well, don't be bashful, Doc. Just bust right in. All right, you got an itch. Go ahead and scratch it. I want you to cancel this benefit tonight. And the concert tour. Why the hell should I do that? Because I'm readmitting Eli to the hospital. Uh, no, you aren't. Now, shut up, Jim. Yeah, this time you're going to listen to me. I can't continue to treat Eli here. He's got to have full hospital facilities. And I don't care what you say. This time, you're not going to change my mind. Don't you think you're blowing this thing just a little out of proportion, Doc? My God, what does it take to get through to you? Eli's killing himself with pills. Just look at him. He's getting to a point he can hardly function. Now, against my better judgment, I've been treating him here. But no more. He's going back into the hospital. There's nothing wrong with Eli. Eli's never been in better health. You know why? because he's got a healthy career, and that makes him a healthy man. Then I'm through. Find Eli another physician. And Jim, I'd watch my blood pressure if I were you. I got some furniture here to be delivered. Where do you want it? Okay, go on in. Turn my damn knees up. I'll call this in all. Why Chad and Jenny walk out on me? Why is everybody walking out on me? Take it easy, Eli. 
They walked out together, didn't they, Dusty? They left together. Look, won't you try to get some rest, Eli? You got a concert tonight. I'll rest. After we fix those two, Jenny fancies herself some fancy singer. We'll make damn sure that don't happen. Chad. We'll make sure he doesn't work for anybody ever again. Justin, nobody walks out on me. Nobody. Eli? Son? Dusty, take a break outside. Eli, let me talk to you, son. Come over here. Where's the band? They get here yet? No, they're gonna be at the concert tonight. But I need them here now. I've got to rehearse. I gotta remember the Eli, lyrics. Eli, son, listen to me. I want you to get control of yourself. I want you to get all this junk out of your head. Concentrate on your career. See, your career is important because it's strong. And it makes you strong. Yourself and your career. That's what I want you to remember. Mr. Cannon, what's up? Get in here. We gotta rehearse. Come on, hurry. We haven't got much time. Rehearse, man. I'm not going to wait. You um, wanted to see the posters we're going to use in the overseas tour, so I had the printer send one over. Okay, boys. Well, what do you think? I think that is the gaudiest damn thing I've ever seen. And I love it. All right, you boys can just leave it. Who are you? Hey, man, I'm Jay Setzer. Well, let's get one thing straight up front, Jay. People pay to hear me sing and not to hear you play. Let's do it again. Hold it! What in the hell are you trying to do? We're supposed to be doing this together. You're trying to wreck my career. You play like your damn fingers are broke. I can't even hear the bass. And I ask you not to play so damn loud. Hey, man, dig it. You understand? No, it's not even worth it, man. It's not you worth come it. Back. You come back. You come back here. You don't walk it. out on me. Nobody walks out on worth me. It. The whole thing ain't worth it. OK. Hell, get. Get out of here. I love you. Get. I don't need you. Get out. I need people around me that are with me, not against me. Now get! Get out. I don't want you around anymore. Nobody. You can't trust nobody. Get out of my house. Eli, what the hell's wrong with you? You walked out on me. Man, that's what I come back to get straightened out. You walked out on me. Eli, don't get up.
Now you listen to me, Eli. I didn't walk out on you. I was fired. Cannon got rid of me. Just like he got rid of Susan, Jenny, and Teddy. But you know something, Eli? Cannon's not your worst enemy. You are. Don't call me back unless you know where Eli is. I still think we ought to call the police. No cops. No. Did you see the study? I said no cops. Eli? Son? What happened to you? Where you been, son? The benefits already started, boy. Dean, you go ahead. I'll... I'll... I'll get Eli to the benefit. See, I don't think you remember who you are, son. So I want you to tell me now, who are you? I don't know. I'm Eli Canfield. Say it, son. I'm Eli Canfield. I'm finished. No, son, now you listen to me. You're not finished. You're never going to be finished. You're right up there on top. There's not anybody any bigger. I can't do it anymore. Yes, you can. You can do it. See, we can do it together, just like we've always done it. No. Yes. Yes, now I want you to listen to me. You're Eli Canfield, you're number one, and I've got the power to keep you there. Son, 
There are thousands of people out there every day just scratching and clawing, trying to dig their way to the top. They want to be up there where you are. <laughs> but they ain't never going to make it. It doesn't last forever. It does. It does. Now listen to me. When you've got the power, and I've got the power. All right. Just let them hurt. That don't matter. See, it's our career. That's the important thing. That's all that matters. <laughs> Son, you and me, we're a team. We need each other. And nobody else matters. Now, come on, son. We've got a, we've got a concert sold out and waiting on us. Come on, man. Come on. show starts tonight and you're up there on that stage, you're going to understand, son. Nothing else matters. All right. Let me get a look at you now. You're Eli Kenfield. And the whole damn world knows it. Listen. You're Eli Kenfield. And the whole damn world can't bring us down. All right, let's go, son. No waiting on us. <laughs> 